Maria, I'm going to start with you. Your clients are probably a little, a little freaked out, to use that same term I used at the top of the show, kind of wondering, hey, how, when and how does this all end? How is inflation going to impact their investments? What are your answers to the questions you're no doubt getting? Uh, so, you know, luckily on the fixed income side, we have stayed short for a long time. And so the recent move in rates is an opportunity for us because cash is no longer trash. In essence, cash can be very much a great opportunity in this environment. And so we have been taking advantage in the past few days of the fact that six month and one year treasuries are now close to 4%. We had not seen that in 15 years. Um, CDs cannot compare. They're, the highest CD now is about 3%. So we've been taking advantage of the highest um, opportunity that we've seen in 15 years. Mm. On the equity side, you have to stay the course. You cannot time market. So at this point, we're feeling confident that we can weather the storm. Yes. I mean, I mean what's, what's your take? On this, I mean, every time we think it's getting a little better, we just had a CPI number, which is red hot, but did decelerate a little bit. And today we're talking about FedEx saying the economy is going down the tank. There are some signs that ultimately the Fed's work is doing some of its job. So the break-even inflations for, say, the two-year and the 10-year are down in the mid-twos. So even though the near-term inflation numbers are high, maybe we get them down Plus, there's the possibly the domestic benefit of so much chaos around the world, almost sort of a mini World War II kind of benefit where we're the only shop that's really open and fully operating. But FedEx really pointed to the big concern in this market, and that is while inflation is still here, can you keep those margins? FedEx actually increased sales 5% year over year, but earnings went down 20%. So I think as you're focusing on the equity markets, who can keep their margins? One place you look are just the classic sectors that work in a rising rate and inflationary environment. Energy was up the last eight weeks, even with gas prices down, and financials were flat in the face of, of, a, of a down equity market. But you can also look to companies with pricing power. We like folks that have grown their dividends consistently over the years. The S&P 500 dividend aristocrats expanded their margins in the first and second quarter, yeah. even in the face of shrinking S&P 500 margins. So there are some things that are a little bit safer, even in this challenging environment. I'll follow up with you before I go back to Maria. Simeon, what about a utility, utilities in a rising rate environment? I'll tell you why. I was talking about this with somebody up there who runs a utility fund. It's like, here's the idea. Utilities are all asking for and receiving rate hike increases. They're also being given potentially hundreds of billions of dollars under the Inflation Reduction Act to build out renewable and utility scale type things, they're not going away. Are utilities a good bet in this environment? I think you have to be a little bit cautious with utilities because it's, again, it's this, it's this dichotomy of higher dividend yield versus growing dividends. And utilities historically, even with that ability to get some regulatory increases in prices, haven't been the best dividend growers. It's been a place where yields are high, and that's one of the reasons why they've actually thrived most when rates are really low. So I, I get your point. Maybe there's a little extra juice for certain utilities that will participate in, in the green revolution, but I'd be a little concerned um, of, those, of higher yielding places in a rising rate environment. We're going into the weekend, Maria. It's Friday. It's beautiful out here in the New York area. People are scared. They've been losing money. Give us some words of comfort and solace as we head into, you know, his, September, the, the worst month of the year historically for stocks. Yeah, look, markets don't like surprises. We came into this week with a rally. Everybody was expecting that we were reaching peaks, peaks in inflation, peaks in interest rates. And Tuesday just said, not, not happening. So what you do is you have to buy things that are opportunities in this environment. And for example, banks, bank preferreds are one of the very good places that we've been finding solace and peace of mind. They have dividends that adjust quarterly that are paying a spread that is quite attractive around seven plus percent that adjust as interest rates adjust forward. So there are pockets of opportunity in the markets that we can take advantage to get that peace of mind. Having said that, we've been telling our clients, let's fasten our seatbelts. We don't know if we're going into a hard landing or a soft mm. landing, but we know it's going to be a bumpy road. So know what you own and feel comfortable that you can weather the storm.